Hi, this is John with the English Weekly Practice from English Coaching Projects. The Weekly English Practice or the English Weekly Practice? <laughs> Hi, this is John with the English Weekly Practice. <laughs> Hi, this is John with the Weekly English Practice from English Coaching Projects. Okay then, well today I'm here on my recycled cycle. Uh, this is, was a present to me from uh, one of our students, Mikael. Thanks Mikael. Um, well, I've been cycling around as always on, uh, on the cycle, bike friendly streets of Victoria. Uh, uh, I always, as you can see, always uh, wear a helmet. I have my flashing red light here, another one at the back and a one at the, at the front as well. When I can, I always go on the cycle paths uh, I go on the uh, on the road but when the traffic is um, slowed to 30 and I respect uh, p uh, pedestrians. So that's why I'm a little bit sad that the council is proposing to bend the stick towards the motorist uh, again and I think it's a mistake and in this week's Weekly English I, I'm going to put some strong opinions about why we should uh, keep things the same but with some little uh, ch changes and, and respect between pedestrians, uh, car drivers and, uh, and, and cyclists. And I'll, uh, I'll come back with you, we can, we can have a chat. I think one important factor in this debate about cycling in Victoria is that cyclists are not the enemy. Many cyclists are motorists, many motorists are cyclists and everyone is a pedestrian together so we should be putting one uh, section of the uh, society against others cyclists against pedestrians pedestrians against against motorists we have to all work together so this week especially but, but as always I think we should uh, discuss this uh, weekly English about cycling in your in your class and send us your opinions because we'd be very interested to hear what you think about cycling and in uh, in gas days See you. Bye-bye. Happy cycling. How green and bicycle friendly is Gas Days really? Coach John gives his strong opinion about the proposed changes by Vittoria Gas Days Council to the rules regarding the circulation of bicycles in the city. Gas Days has long had a well-deserved reputation as a bike-friendly city, which has enhanced its green credentials. However, the PNV-led local council has just announced a series of possible measures which, in my opinion, and that of many other cyclists, will, if implemented, put that hard-earned green reputation in serious jeopardy. The proposals are 1. Circulation by bike only on cycle paths or roadways. 2. It will be forbidden to ride in pedestrian areas meaning the pavement, except for children under 15 years of age. However, children under 12 years of age may ride on the pavement with an adult. 3. Bicycles will only be permitted to park on bike racks and street furniture, 
but not benches or trees. The councillor in charge of immobility was quartered in El Correo as saying that Vitoria has been permissive with a bicycle. But what do they actually mean by that? For many years, Vitoria has had clear and concise regulations on cycling and if anyone has had to enforce them, it is the council. Which means that this permissiveness could only be due to laziness or a failure to do things properly on the council's part. From a cycling point of view, it is true there is a lot of permissiveness in terms of cars parking in double lines in cycle lanes, the invasion of cycle lanes by runners and pedestrians, no real speed control in 30 kilometer zones by traffic police, a lack of proper signposting at cycle priority crossings, I could go on. Already, the council are quoting figures of how much cyclists will be fined if they do not obey the proposed new rules. Yet again, politicians are resorting to threats and sanctions rather than trying to convince the public and look for consensus. I propose a completely different approach. As a cyclist, I do admit that some of us on two wheels do not always follow the rules and can be an irritation to pedestrians. But let's be honest, it's fast cars that kill pedestrians and cyclists. The statistics show that very few pedestrians are even slightly injured by cyclists riding on pavements. It is not helpful to create false divisions between pedestrians and cyclists. All cyclists are pedestrians too. And many are also car drivers. We need to continue the pedestrian and bike friendly policy in gas days and foster a more cooperative and mutually respectful atmosphere between us all. In neighbourhoods like Salbarua, where the pavements are more than three metres wide, I propose to allow cyclists to ride responsibly on the pavements until traffic is slowed to 30 kilometres on the roads and clearly marked and safe cycle paths are allocated. Cyclists and scooter riders also need to show respect and learn the rules. Riding with no hands or texting while riding is not allowed. They also need to know they have no right to speed across zebra crossings, which is extremely dangerous. They should dismount and push their bike or scooter across the road. Car drivers must be clear that on elevated crossings with the yellow crisscross lines, they have to give way. It would be a shame if the city's green credentials were lost by implementing these proposals as they stand. We all need to talk more and impose less. But most of all, educate ourselves about the existing rules and respect them and each other. Now, here are the questions to talk about with your friends, classmates and colleagues. And why not write down your answers via WhatsApp or an email. We'd love to hear your opinions. Question 1. What are the Council's new mobility proposals? Question 2. Does John agree or disagree with the proposals? Question 3. Why does John say the quartered councillor is in charge of immobility? Question 4. Are you mostly a pedestrian, cyclist or car driver? Question 5. Do the proposals make gas days less green? Question 6. If you were council leader, what would you do? And finally, question 7. What do you think about the quotes on page 2?